I'm not sure most of you guys know, but there's been a really funny thing happening at the moment with um, that restaurant called Horses, right, which I mentioned beforehand in LA, where they're going through this crazy scandal where um, one of the chefs behind Horses LA has been accused of um, by his no by his ex wife because they're currently going through divorce that allegedly the cats that they were taking in are strays and uh, from what I've been hearing on the ground level, um, a lot of restaurants do this. Um, restaurants do this if they have mice if you have mice issues in your restaurants um, or whatever you usually get mice or rats whatever it may be you usually get cats in to your restaurant and they will kind of act as a you know um, in house security team to get rid of your rats and your mice problem and this restaurant did the same thing but then over time it just became you know like a cat restaurant they they had some cats themselves in their home and I guess over the, over the years over time the wife started to realize that a lot of the cats were dying. And she couldn't re figure out why. She had some suspicions because her husband, I guess, was somewhat violent. And then one time, she must have walked into. She must have walked in on the husband having a wank and also strangling a cat at the same time, which is fucking wild. And um, this has been happening, whatever. And it's been a big news on social media because this restaurant called Horses is a very popular hipster restaurant. And this woman decided to put this tweet out, really interesting hot take called Helen Rosler. And she said the following, <clears throat> restaurants shouldn't be cool. Coolness in a restaurant is a red flag. And I think I have to somewhat agree with it. I think she's mostly speaking about it from like the point of view of like, <clears throat> if a restaurant has a queue around the block, I'm not going to queue. If you have to fucking, you know, <clears throat> submit an application to eat somewhere, it's lame. I understand what she means. But it's also from coming from the point of view of like, if you never get invited to the cool restaurants, or if you don't know about them before they open or whatever, or before they're popular, you kind of feel a little bit out of the loop. And to kind of help you cope with it, you have these takes. But then there's also been a counter take. <clears throat> And a counter take I heard from Chris Black on How Long Gone podcast, who said something that I thought was absolutely insane. But I've seen other people agree with it, which I think is nuts. Some people say restaurants should be cool. If a restaurant isn't cool, what's the point of going there? And I legitimately can't understand how that makes any sense. Because by definition, a restaurant should be reviewed and kind of revered because of the food. If the food isn't good, why the fuck are you going to a restaurant? I would never go to a restaurant just because it's cool. You're going there because of the food. Now, if it happens to be cool, if it happens to have a cool ambiance, um, interesting architecture, some interesting people doing interesting things with food who are behind it, um, in an interesting place, to, you know, attraction, a cool, you know, uh, group of people who like to eat there on the regular, whatever, fair enough. But the point of going to a restaurant, it has to have good food. Is it known for its steaks? It's smashing it. Known for its burgers, they're great. Has great pizza, has great pasta, has great salads, desserts, whatever. But it always starts with the stuff that's going in your mouth. Not because, you know, I'm not going to a restaurant because they are known for playing Playboy Carty really loud on the speakers. I'm not going for the restaurant because they have fucking Miller, you know, fucking um, seating and shit. And they have really amazing architecture and interior design everywhere around the place and cool pieces of artwork. I'm not going to a restaurant just because the founder behind it happens to be one of the coolest people in the world. No, you go there in part because it's cool, but primarily because it's a really nice restaurant. And the reason why, the reason why, <laughs> fuck you, Eric C. The reason why it makes me angry and pissed off this sort of shit because it reminds me why some restaurants i've never gone to a good example of it in england we have this restaurant called rita's and this restaurant called rita's is known you know it's known for i think they do like tacos and shit or whatever something else but they used to make really good cocktails they really got good food and they've got a new restaurant now in soho but rita's i think before might have be called pamela's or maybe it's called pamela's now one or the other rita or pamela's right this restaurant here in london actually let me see if i can get it up here on the screen rita's london oh it is so yeah it's still here there we go rita's london right this restaurant is really cool and everyone fucking loves it the founders behind it are pretty cool i guess in some respects if you look at them that way um i kind of grew up not grew up around some of the people that are involved in this when i was going in the east london scene but this is the this is the this is the this is the flip side of having a cool restaurant if you have a cool restaurant like this right you have to the people behind have to be cool but they also have to be very likable and unfortunately, for me only, and again, this is just my own personal experience. 
I know nothing about these people outside of the restaurant. I've not even met the other person, but I've met one of the persons. And this main guy in the restaurant, the one with the beard, I don't know what his name is, but this main guy with the restaurant who does Rita's is incredibly unlikable. Very cool person, but I never liked the guy's attitude. He just came across like a bit of a cunt. Like proper, proper wanker vibes. And this was back in the day when me and my friend used to do um, this party in in East London called So Special. This, we do it in this uh, club called uh, The Alibi. And this guy was friends with one of the founders of The Alibi. So I used to see him in there all the time. Never spoke to him. Never said one word to him, I don't think, in the entire time I've been around there. But he just gave me a vibe of somebody that thought he was better than people. I never understood that side of things. Like, you're no better than all of us. You're in the same fucking dingy basement bar like we are. You can't be better than anybody because because you're sitting over there, you're standing over here. It doesn't matter what jacket you've got on. We're all the same people, especially if we're drinking in this hellhole of a fucking pub. But he was always a bit of a prick, in my personal opinion. Now, because of that, I've never visited Rita's because I'm not giving money to somebody who I don't like just because of what, what they look like or how they come across and act. It just is what it is. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, if I'm not into something, I'm, if, I'm, if I don't like the people doing the stuff they're doing, I don't like supporting the stuff that they're making, which means for the most part, I have sometimes a tough time sometimes making sure that I don't meet people that do stuff that I like because I don't want to meet you and you're a cunt and now I have to kind of stop do, backing what you're doing. The same thing happened with Palace. I was a big fan of the brand when it started. I had a really bad one-off interaction with a couple people behind this brand. And then I've never worn the brand since then. And, you know, they can, they can, they can go, they can fucking die. I fucking hate them all. So because of that, I don't wear it. So the cool stuff can have two folds. If you don't like the people behind it and it's cool, you're not going to go there because you don't want to give cool cunts money. But if it is cool, you're going to go there because it's cool. And then it doesn't matter if the food's good. But I can't legitimately, in my head, justify or figure out why anybody with a brain would want to go to a restaurant just because it's cool. It sounds legitimately redacted. And that maybe is a a symptom of the times that we're in, that some people just generally, I guess, I wonder if it extends to music. Would you listen to music that's terrible just because it's cool? It's actually way cooler, I think, to have your own mind, to think for yourself, and be like, you know what? Because everybody thinks this is cool, I'm not going to like it and have the kind of, you know, to be a contrarian in that regard, I think it's a much cooler place to be, to come from, as opposed to being the guy that's always jumping on the bandwagon of liking stuff or loving or hating stuff because of what it is. But then a part of me also thought to myself, as much as I dislike the guys, you know, behind Rita's and stuff and, you know, that chef really pissed me off in terms of his attitude, I was, I was meditating a little bit, I was thinking to myself, maybe that wasn't even personal. Maybe it was me as well. I don't know how I come across with some people. I could come across like a bit of a cunt and a prick and unlikable. I understand that. But also it made me think to myself, I don't know many people behind restaurants. I go to restaurants and eat because I like to go and eat at restaurants. I review them how I want to review them and I kind of step away. I think I actually used to do um, a couple of reviews. I'm not sure if I still have them on my blog, but I had a couple of reviews that I would do on my blog just for myself, whatever. But I'm generally not doing them for anybody to like give me free meals or shit. I don't want to get involved in it. I just want to just eat at the places that I love and I've seen across the way and then kind of keep it moving. That's all I want to do in that regard, right? I'm not really looking at it any deeper than that. But then it made me think a little bit about restaurants in, in general and about chefs. And I remember hearing people say who are involved in the industry and behind the scenes that all chefs are kind of cunts. Like it doesn't matter. They all kind of have a bit of a you know, an attitude. They all kind of have a bit of a superiority complex. And it might just be a, a kind of a symptom of working in that industry. Fast paced, um, really stressful, long hours. Um, you know, the success rate of restaurants isn't the greatest either. So so uh, you can understand why sometimes if you want to be a successful chef or a restaurateur, you kind of have to have a bit of a a shield, a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a screen in front of you. You kind of have that, that bit of temperament. And usually I'd imagine if you're working in these places night and day, it's very difficult to kind of turn that shit on and off. Sometimes, even if you're, if you're off day and you're not working, you just still have that kind of anger in you, that kind of cunty vibe about you. Because that's what I remember feeling with that guy a couple of times I kind of bumped into him. Like, this guy comes across like a bit of a cunt. But it's just like something that's kind of deeply ingrained in him from his soul. That he has something about him I just don't like. I'm not going to speak to you. So I've never did. And I legitimately don't even know what his voice sounds like. That's how deep it is. So I'm sure that interaction was not personal. 
I'm sure that vibe that I felt wasn't anything that was specific to me. And I'm sure it had more to do with just people that work in restaurants. And, you know, it just is what it is. But I'm also not in the business of ever licking anybody's ass, especially somebody who's trying to act like I need to. That's always going to turn me off. I'm never, ever going to have a good time with that shit, you know? Um, I'm actually looking back at my fucking blog and looking back at some old posts I've got in here. I've got a post here of my experience of when I went to fucking Bergheim in 2020. And this is a good example of like where my vibe was and how much, you know, at what kind of current, you know, at what sort of, uh, what's that thing called? Um, at what sort of frequency I was vibrating on. Look at these pictures. There's a picture of me standing in a queue. There's a picture of a plant pot inside my Airbnb. There's a picture of crates and crates of beer that I probably purchased at one of the rivers somewhere because you can just pick up the entire thing and buy them there. There's a picture of me carrying a bag of little, and I think this is some, you know, groceries and some, you know, a little fruit juice there. There's a picture of me taking a selfie of myself in a fucking window with a, my good New York boots on and my little custom denim pants on and my black bomber jacket, right? Like, that looks like a picture run of somebody that was getting fucked up. None of these pictures make sense. <laughs> They're all very varying levels of quality. <laughs> but one thing you can tell from these pictures is that I was getting lit. That's for sure. You can tell I was feeling myself. You can tell I was getting lit. You can tell I was having a good time. Legitimately. Nowadays, you see pictures of me going outside. Number one, there's rarely any. And it's not, it's, they're kind of coherent. They tell a coherent sort of story as to how the day's events kind of progressed. But now, looking back at this, I'm like, damn, son. You used to be the man, son. Now you're washed up, son. <laughs> it kind of is a bit bittersweet to take to. But anyway, let me see if I can see it. Um, let me see. I've got some food reviews here. I'm pretty sure that I did back in the day. Let me see if I can find it because... Most of my food reviews just happen to be me basically going to, yeah, there we go, random places in, around, you know, whatever, and just kind of reviewing shitty food that I love to eat. Look at this. Me reviewing a restaurant called um, Olive C Lemon Cafe. It's not really a restaurant. It's probably like a fry-up. And, you know, taking a good picture there of the fry-up and reviewing it. Imagine me giving a plate of food. Maybe you shouldn't trust my opinion on restaurants. If I'm taking pictures of baked beans, hash browns, bacon, sausage, mushroom, and eggs, and giving it, a 7 out of 10. <laughs> you can't be taking my review of food that seriously and my review of restaurateurs and chefs and how they run their business when I'm the person, right, who's reviewing fry-ups and giving them a 7 out of 10. Maybe you shouldn't be taking my opinion seriously. Maybe, just maybe. <laughs> uh, let, me let me read this. This is, this is my review from Lemon... Uh, oh my god look how long that review is fucking no how long uh, was i on fucking crack writing this shit um let's just read it here it says um djing can be stressful at times i spend most of my evenings during the week glued to my laptop screen desperately trying to come up with a new hour of music in preparation for a gig on friday or saturday night the gig itself is fairly straightforward especially if i've done the necessary work beforehand but there are times however brief when i'm heading into the fourth hour of my dj set where i think to myself is all this work is all this work worth the squeeze yo i was fucking struggling with life and issues and shit from 2018 in it i've always been a bit of a mental case cool good to know continues uh and you know what it is especially in the morning after you try and figure out where you're gonna have a fry up aka a full english breakfast you wake up bleary, bleary eyed and still relatively drunk but somehow find a way of locating several breakfast cafes within five to ten minute walk distance to spend your hard-earned dj money on it's one of life's truly magical moments i can guarantee you that <laughs> Olive and Lemon Cafe is okay just outside the shopping mall, a couple doors before the big weather spoons, with ample seating outside where most of the patrons. <laughs> I'm calling people who sit outside of a fucking fry up patrons. Honestly, I'm tapped. Um, or the patrons were located, even though it was minus um, zero degrees outside, we decided to sit out indoors. Um, we didn't have to wait long for one of the attentive waitresses to come over to our table and give us a menu, which was fairly straightforward, thank God. The breakfast menu was uh, sat alongside various baguettes, 
ciabattas and wraps. I went for the full breakfast because I'm a man, and but more importantly, <laughs> because I was hungover as fuck and desperately needed as much as carbs as I possibly can order in order to land of the living. Um, the brunette went for the Mediterranean. I was quite surprised when my plate arrived. Instead of a large porcelain, white covered, greasy, fried goodness, I was presented with a fairly stripped back and dare I say clean plate of food. Imagine me calling this plain. Honestly, my head is absolutely gone. As you can tell from the picture above, everything looked tasty and tasted fresh. The mushrooms were surprisingly nice. I was also ordered a plate of chips because why not? And they were perfectly cooked with the addition of some Himalayan sea salt provided for free on each table. Delightful. My only gripe were the eggs. They weren't cooked as well as I liked, which I probably should have stated. And I only got one instead of two. And although the sausage was really tasty, overall for six pounds, including the coffee and two bits of toast, I was thoroughly satisfied and I'm more than happy to visit again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay maybe don't listen to me when it comes to reviews of food because i'm i'm reviewing fry ups without any hint of irony and thinking i'm legitimately doing something oh my god but anyway let's continue here i think i've got one more good one actually here um no more food we got the fucking me talking about my tom Sachs. look how good they used to look back there where's the review of food i'm pretty sure i've got oh actually is it called munch that and i think it's called munch that let me search on there it should be called munch that i've got a whole list of fucking reviews on here that i, I deemed under the code of much that so it should be all on there let me see yeah there we go see there we go okay so we've got yeah let's try look at this see this is when i went to la now i remember when i went to la i went to la in 2015 so i got my review of um in and out burger in 2015 here it's heavily edited um you know tonal view of the fucking burger and chips over there in and out but i really honestly this is one restaurant that i'm hoping that this is the one thing that i miss about america in and out or so delightful so tasty coming from somebody you know in, in the uk at the time our burger scene wasn't as great as it probably is now it's probably the best it's ever been now there's really good burgers out there but there was a time in period of time where but in and out burgers wasn't no, in and burgers was the pinnacle of burgers and I remember my first time going there in it, when I went to LA. And I, I think I went to LA, yeah, 2015 for the Camp Flogna, um, Tyler, the Creators Festival. And obviously I also went to the Laugh Factory. And the first thing I did when I went to LA was to go to In-N-Out. That was the first fucking thing I did. And legitimately, it blew me away how fucking tasty that burger was. The one thing that was horrible was the fucking fries. The fries are like cardboard. And then I found out, what is it again? They cook the fries in like, is it like peanut oil or something? No. Why, why are they made like that? I'm not sure if you guys remember in the chat, if you could tell me. LA, there's a reason why the, 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 the fries in In-N-Out are really bad. I think it's something to do with the, how they cook them or how they... I don't know. Regardless, they're really terrible. They're disgusting. But the burger, the burger is fucking amazing. I could have four of them back to back. Like next time I go to LA, I actually won't actually get a double double. I'll get probably a single patty so I can spread the meat across and, you know, pause. And I don't have to fucking get too full. I'll probably be able to finish like two, four cheeseburgers. But the, the, the ugh, it was so good from the bread to the fucking juiciness and the the texture of the fucking meat, the, the vegetables inside. Like, it just felt so, so amazing in the mouth. I'm not going to lie. It was legitimately one of the best things I've ever eaten in my entire life when I had flipping in and out burgers. And I can't wait to visit there once again. Um, yeah, see, look, I even say in my review here, um, succulent beef patty sandwiched between a combo of onions, cheese, tomato, and lovely fluffy bun, the recipe of which I will hunt down until the end of time. The fries I could do without. They had a weird cardboard type taste. Once cool, they tasted even worse. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Oh my God. The In-N-Out burgers, if, so the In-N-Out fries, if you don't eat them right away, if you let them sit for like five minutes as you're eating your burger, like if you're like a psycho that likes to eat their burger first and not their fries, I personally like to eat my fries before I eat my burger. But if you're a psycho that likes to eat their burger before their fries, you're going to be in for a shock. The fries are awful if you wait five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it is. So, so bad. It really kind of bummed me out. But the but the fry, but the but the burgers and the shake, amazing. Um Took into account everyone else's order I spy during my visit. It seems that like common knowledge that the fries are to be avoided. Um, if you ever find yourself in the land of the stars and stripes, take some time out of the day and visit this mecca of all things burgers and refillable, refillable fizzy pop. Oh, yeah, another thing too, I realized. Um, you people in America have it fucking great. You have refillable fucking drinks, like fizzy drinks. 
we don't have that here we maybe have that in a couple of restaurants nando's i can think of it being one of them um but it's not really a thing in the uk to have like refillable drinks you have to just buy your drink by the cup so if you want another one you buy another one but the fact that you guys have the ability to fucking go and get you know a refill on your fucking fizzy pop is fucking amazing um but i also understand if i if i live there and i could get refillable drinks and i could eat in and out of you every day in chick-fil-a i would be a fucking door i would look like wings of redemption honestly i would be wings of redemption level of fat i'd be so horrible here um but yeah big up in and out burgers big up in and out scene and um yeah man i think my conclusion on this topic here Restaurants shouldn't be cool. You should go to a restaurant primarily because of the food. My own personal opinion. Um, but if the restaurant is cool and also makes good food, that's absolutely amazing. But if a restaurant has to rely on coolness in order for people to come in through its doors, it's probably failed before it started. Personally for me. And I honestly am such a contrarian. I want to be so different and unique. If a restaurant is cool and everyone's going there, I'll purposely avoid it. Just so I can be the coolest one because I'm not going there. Suck on that for a little bit, huh? Suck on that.